Um, start with Tyron. Tyron's got a, a vet day like he's taken um, this last couple weeks. Michael Carter, uh, he will not practice today. Um, had a little hamstring that um, ultimately became uh, a back. So he's going to gather some more information today, uh, give you guys information when I figure it out. Um, but he's, he's eager to play and, and try to work through it, so we'll see. Um, Aaron, is uh, he's going to be limited today, as he's been on, on most Wednesdays, this being a Wednesday, this a Thursday. Um, same ankle, a uh, little bit of the hamstring, um, limited in practice, but uh, no thoughts of, of any time you'll miss on, uh, on Monday night. Um, Conk's going to be, he's going to be limited as well. He's got a bit of a hip. CJ's got his toe um, that he keeps working with. Um, we're going we're gonna to rev up CJ a little bit today as far as the volume that he gets, you know, in, in practice and see, see how that feels for him. Obviously a guy that we'd love to have back, especially for Monday night. Morgan has the knee um, on track to play, fired up. What an amazing guy Morgan is. Like, you know, just he brings so much juice, energy, culture beyond just just the player that he is. So fired up that he's going to be back with us. And then Lakey, he's the last one. Um, very hopeful that he'll get his, his first opportunity to play for us this, this Monday night. Um, super excited about what he brings to the table. So he's still working through that hamstring. We'll see how the week goes. Um, all right. Regarding the staff, um, after a lot of time um, to think about it and uh, did not make this decision um, easily by any means, I'm going to make Todd Downing the, the play caller um, for the New York Jets going forward. And this is more a byproduct of a different take on things. I'm not saying it's a better or worse take on things by any means, but just a different take on things, a fresh, a fresh approach. So ultimately, Todd will have the full say on the game plan and ultimately the, the, the plays that are called within the game. Um, saying that as well, uh, just another testament to the human being that Nathaniel Hackett is, the fact that he's going to give us everything in his body and heart and soul, and um, he's going to continue to be a big part of the success we're going to have going forward from an offensive perspective. And just um, I feel so fortunate that he is he's staying with us. Um, I mean, here's a guy that's been a head coach in this league and, and uh, willing to draw cards, willing to do whatever it takes. So the true heart of a servant, just um, I feel so fortunate that he's on our staff, that he's in our lives, and, and uh, I can't speak enough good things about him. Uh, from the defensive perspective, I will maintain the title of, of uh, defense coordinator, and I will maintain the play calling duties. So uh, saying that, like we're moving on to the Bills. It is time. Um, it is time we get this thing going, um, start playing the brand of football we know we're capable of. Um, so our, the entirety of our focus is now on the Buffalo Bills. Are any titles changed? No, 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 no titles will change, just, just duties. That's it. How will uh, Hackett's uh, just day-to-day -day operations change, if any, at all? Um, as far as the final say on, on, on the game plan and as far as calling the plays will probably be the only thing that really changes, you know, and maybe a little bit less in front of the room, um, obviously with Todd assuming that role now. So um, he's still going to be a huge contributor to everything we do on offense. Jeff, you had said that you would consult with Aaron on offensive changes. What was the reaction to this change in the play call? It, it was obviously um, – uh, not necessarily a shock, but you know, like we all are familiar with the relationship he has with Nathaniel, and um, they're 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 very very good friends that go back a long way. So um, he was he understood the decision and he was supportive of the decision, um, and I'm I'm fortunate that for that. So I talked to him. I talked to a lot of different offensive players and defensive players for that matter uh, before making this decision. Uh, you, you talked about just uh, maintaining the play call defensively, but uh, I assume you'll have some help with some other people. Oh, there's no doubt. I'm so fortunate to have Mike Rutenberg, Rudy, and Marquan, and Tony Oden, and Aaron Whitecotton, and, and R.D., and Scruggs, and, and Shaq, and, and Nathaniel, all of them. They do an amazing job, even before this transition occurred. Um, they are the best in the business, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm going to lean on them even more now. Yeah, how, how much are you going to involve yourself with the offense now that you are? I know you're doing the play calling on defense still, but obviously you're overseeing everything. Right. No, I, I definitely want to have an influence there as well. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna really look hard at this week and how I can find those places to um, infuse my personality into that side of the ball. Um, 
from a strategic or from a schematic standpoint, I don't know if there'll be a ton of input, but as far as style of play, um, absolutely. You know, the way this thing looks on Monday night, um, I'm hopeful that, uh, that I can infuse that into them. Is there something about Todd's either background with Tennessee? I'm sure he probably went against him. Without a doubt. When he was in Tennessee or since he's been here about his play calling style or particular strength that appeals to you while making that decision? Yeah, I've always had a ton of respect for, for Todd. Um, schematically, like, I'm always looking at a guy like that as a uh, um, – that's a small piece of the puzzle for me. It really is the style of play which that group, what do they embody? Like the, the casual fan that's watching the game, what do they walk away saying about that offense? And for every Tennessee offense that I ever went against when, when Todd was the play caller there, they were tough. They were ruthless. They finished. They ran the ball. Um, they played on their terms. And there was a, um, there's definitely a style that, that appealed to me in that way. You guys spend so much time Installs and all that stuff. How much fundamentally can the offense change? Uh, Miss I, I think it's probably more the way you the call it and how you call it, the sequencing, the the um, <laughs> the coupling up of plays and formations, and th- th- there's some things that you can do from differently. You know, now ultimately we gotta we gotta execute better, and we gotta. Man, you made me nervous right there. <laughs> I thought that was my phone. <laughs> That's like the ex-player in me. Like, there's the phone. There's my fine. You know, yeah, so, so you're right. There's not going to be this wholesale change necessarily schematically. How the game is, is called will be a little bit different. But, Jeff, what, what needs to change? Like, well, you know, you were always focused on the defense now. That Without a doubt. I guess the last couple of days you've really been deep diving into the offense. What needs to change? We've got to be assertive. We've got to play with confidence. Um, we've got to run off the ball. Uh, we got to play on our terms. Can't be f- afraid of mistakes and, and half stepping. Um, we got to play this game on our terms. And uh, and I'm, I'm very confident we're going to see that Monday night. Jeff, with the big picture, you know, obviously you're focused on this week. But for you, how do you look at this opportunity? Is this just the start? Is this even you know building something maybe beyond this week, this season, moving forward? Yeah, I, I, my connection with this locker room, um, obviously probably a little bit more as of today with the defensive side of the ball, but I, I hope to, to really um, develop deep and strong relationships with the entire locker room, more so than I have to this point. You know, and, and ultimately I want the best for this group of men. It's just rare that you find the character of this locker room and, and the, the human beings that we have in there. They deserve to have success, and uh, that is my singular focus right now. Helping them have the most success, both individually and collectively. Jeff, what, what have, is you the to, have you had a chance to kind of reflect on this opportunity for yourself? Kind of no. <laughs> no, not, not yet. It's been a bit, bit of a whirlwind, a little bit of a, a tornado, but um, but it's exciting at the same time. Have you spoken to? I'm sorry. Have you spoken to guys like Dan Quinn? You know. Oh, without a doubt. The last couple of days. Absolutely. What it takes. Yeah. You know. Dan's been a great resource for me always. You know. So is uh, Matt Lafleur, um, Raheem Morris, and I have spoke at length. Um, the beauty of Ra is not only is he made my one of my best friends on this earth, but um, he's been through this as far as an interim was concerned, and. Uh, and gave me a lot of advice regarding that. But uh, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of, um, like, current head coaches that, that have a deep understanding of what this position looks like, feels like, and what's necessary to be successful in it. Yeah, we, both you and the players I talked yesterday, they're using the word accountability a lot. Like, what, what does that look like to you going forward? Like, what do you want to see when you say you need accountability? Well, there's an unwavering standard. Yeah. This, is, this is the expectation, and um, you're either meeting it or you're not. You know, and it's, it's, it's not an emotional thing. You know, so um, every human in this bu- building, that's player and coach. That's not just players. That's players and coaches um, are going to be held to that standard. What is the, the temperature in the locker room right now after, obviously, everything that's happened? And what is the, the maybe unique challenge of this week getting them ready to play for Monday night? Um, as far as the temperature of the locker room, you'd have to ask them. You know, it's, I think it's so fresh. You know, i got a, maybe a, a small sense of, of where they're at from the team meeting, but um, the more that I'm around them this week, practice, meetings, um, the whole deal, uh, I'll have a better feel for that. You know, and then now it's just turning the page, you know. Um, there definitely is an element of, of, of mourning, and, and ultimately um, Robert's firing is on all of us, you know, and we all, I think we have a collective group, most players and coaches like that are pointing the fingers at ourselves, and, and we were part of that. And we, we fell short in whatever way we fell short, and, and uh, we got to remedy that, and we got to remedy it now, Monday night.
How would you describe, how would you describe your coaching style? Uh, again, like I. I never watch press conferences, but I watched the other one when I did this, and I was disappointed in myself that I even answered honestly that question. Like, I would prefer you ask players. I prefer you ask other coaches on who I am as a coach. Like, um, I think that's the only true, honest answer you can get. I can say whatever I want to say, you know. Like, so um, I prefer you ask others. Well, he made it very clear on Tuesday that he has high expectations for this team. Like, he called it probably his best roster in 25 years. So you're stepping into that situation with such high expectations. I mean, how much pressure do you feel to get this team to where he wants it to be? In all honesty, regardless of what the, the roster looks like on paper, it doesn't change the way I approach it. It doesn't. And I know that sounds like coach talk, and I sound that, that sounds like um, what everybody would say, but that is my truth. Like, I approach every day the same, regardless of circumstance the same human being every single day and uh, commit to a process and let the process take care of the results. Now, one one uh, seven gets you guys, and I dated back to last year, um, has been penalties and you know, pre-staff, not, not only pre-staff, but a lot of penalties. How, how do you right. go about addressing that? Because it's been a recurring thing. Yeah, like the, the, the penalties, the aggressive penalties that occur within a game, um, we can live with those, you know, because we're going we're gonna to teach and we're going to encourage a violent uh, brand of football. We are. Um, Saying that the pre-snap stuff, the focus stuff, the 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 offsides, the false starts, the legal shifts, legal formations—that's unacceptable. So that has to—it's got to go away, and it's it's not good enough. And if you see it, it's not good enough. How do you get this team to start faster? Uh, in everything that we do. So that that starts with the way we meet. You know, making sure that you're you're seated, and you're ready to rock and roll. You got a notebook out. You got a pencil. It, it, the way we do walkthroughs, um, the volume in our voices, the body language, like we got to start doing everything with a different sense of urgency, a heightened sense of urgency. And then it just becomes who you are. It becomes part of your DNA. It's not something I think about. I got to start fast. It's just I started everything I do fast. So the game will start fast. How about, I mean, you have so much going on right now. Everything's changed. How about what you do with the offense? Um, I, I'm going to find my spaces. Like as this week goes along, I'm really, um, I'm excited about that opportunity to really get over there and, and spend as much time as I can with them. So, um, as I really figure out this new um, set of responsibilities and and scheduling, um, I'm going to find my spots over there. When you when you spoke to those other coaches who have been through situations like this, was there was there like one underlying skills or, or uh, personality trait that came from head coaches you need to have? Well, the, the biggest thing that I got from not just them, but everybody. I got a, a lot of texts. I'm a very private person in a lot of ways, and sometimes about a 1,000 people found my phone number. But um, uh, just be me. Just be me. Jeff, uh, about Hackett, um, you mentioned that you're happy that he's still here. Absolutely. Was there conversations of him no longer being here after he had? I never had those conversations. Never. That was never even a thought that what crossed my mind. Reaction? It's hard, you know, like the, this is a, a, a coach that's coached this high level for a long time. You know? And um, like I said, he's been a head coach in this. He was so good as an assistant, he became a head coach. And that's that's hard to do. There's 32 of these things in the world. So um, he knows how to call a game. He knows how to be an offense coordinator in this in this uh, in this league. You know, so for him to um, to be told that that's hard, it's really hard. But just what a, an amazing demonstration of the human being that he is. The fact that after being told that, it was like, I got your back. For him to say that to me, I got Todd's back. I got this team's back. I got this staff's back. And I'm going to give you everything I got, even in this different role. I'm going to give you all. And I absolutely believe it, and I know it. And, uh, again, just amazed by the heart of a servant that he has. Can you speak to, speak to the challenge at hand with the Bills? Yeah. What are you seeing from them? That's different than in the past. Um, you know, like as I get, as I've already stated, I'm going to get more and more involved with the other side of the ball as we get going here. Um, speaking from a defensive perspective, uh, they're a different outfit. You know, they're maybe a little bit less uh, passing game than they've had in the past. You know, without um, digs, etc. And uh, there's there, it really feels like a, a new, fresh commitment to the run game. Like they want to. They want to be physical. They want to run the ball. They want to control the clock. They want to protect the ball. So it's a it's a different Buffalo Bills team um, than we faced as 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 the last two years, three years, and uh, so we got to come ready to rock and roll, especially from a physicality standpoint, especially from the standpoint of stopping the run game, and then uh, 
And then as, as we all know, when he passes the ball, yeah, his arm is a major weapon, but his legs are as well. So, you know, containing Josh is going to be a big part of this. Thanks.